Television. Broke up action from Mansfield Motorsports Speedway tonight. It's the Mansfield 250 presented by Hooters Air. Round five of the Northern Division of the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series. 36 cars are on the grid. Hello, everybody. I'm Gene Crane alongside of Scott Sutherland and down on pit road, Stephen Cox to cover all the action. It's a, uh, an unusual day. Well, the air and sales elite weather report's going to give it to us. It's 78 degrees. 86 on the racetrack, but the humidity has been killer all day long, Gene. Well, Scott, at least we got a full session of practice in earlier today. Top stories, rain, rain, and more rain. That has been the story all season long. It was predicted to have rain here in the area. However, we did get practice, and Advanced Auto Parts pole qualifying completed earlier in the day. Saw several cars practicing below the track record. Stephen Cox is with our pole sitter. A very strange racetrack today. We had rain last night, washed away the rubber on the track. A lot of very hot sun today, but one guy figured it out. In fact, you guys were pretty good right off the trailer, weren't you, Shelby? Yeah, we were. Uh, we came here and tested last week and had a really successful test. And uh, the racetrack changed quite a bit today uh, throughout practice, and we chased it and uh, kind of backed up a little bit and figured it was going to cool back down tonight. But uh, have a really good car. Um, the track slowed down qualifying, and uh, I didn't think it was going to be that good of a lap, but I was surprised. But um, anyway, we're on the pole, and uh, uh, there's been a whole lot of hard work to get to this point. Um, i got to thank my dad, uh, Eddie Kelly, the crew chief, and um, all the guys that come over at night uh, to the shop to help us get this thing ready. This is only our third time out, and uh, uh, we're pretty proud to have it on the pole. Well, 48 cars took time during practice earlier today, but there were some cars that didn't make tonight's race, including Crabtree and Denoshek. One notable mention. Joe Harrison Jr. Yeah, he's in the points chase for the Northern Series. You hate to see him blow an engine and not make it. Drivers, start your engines! Well, Hooters girls from Mentor and Toledo, Ohio, giving a, a rounding a response to the crowd as the cars fire up and get ready to go here for 250 laps. Well, there's a lot of teams ready to go. It's been a long, hot day, and now you're ready to go racing. Let's take a look at Mansfield Motor Speedway. A great little half-mile racetrack, good banking. You're going to see the second group's going to really work in. A lot of them guys, that's going to be their primary group. They're going to move up on the racetrack, get great runs off the corner. Pit road is nice and wide open. And it's really easy to get in and out. So this all comes down to the driver and the crew chief. Where can I run my race car? Find that line that makes it work best for me. Field is set and off in the distance. Some of the damage from a tornado that here, hit here several weeks ago, not causing any problems for us, however, this weekend. That was the temporary grandstand that was set up just before the cra uh, Craftsman truck race was here. The tornado come in and wiped them out and they had to start all over again. Tough, tough on this race car. Let's take a look at your naturally fresh starting grid. Shelby Howard misses the track record by just under a tenth of a second. He'll be joined on the outside by Joel Kaufman. Clay Rogers coming in after an eighth-place run at Texas last night. He'll start alongside point leader Benny Gordon in this northern division. Row number three, Southern Division point leader Shane Huffman starts alongside the rookie, 15-year-old Joey Logano in the 51 car. Row number four, Mark McFarland, another Southern Invader, joined by Michael Rich. Still yet another Southern Division driver, seven in total here for tonight's race. Row number five, Mike Laughlin Jr. Couldn't stand it, was going to take this race off. He's back in action. Gary St. Amant starts the 11 alongside. Row number six, Marty Lindley. The 16 car. He'll start alongside Jeff Agnew. Both of these drivers in four. Row number seven. We'll see Martin Esben, Northern Division campaigner for 2005 and a winner just a few races ago in the South. Jody Lavender in car 84. Michelle Theriol, good qualifying effort for the 86 car. She'll start on the inside of row number eight and Johnny Rumley on the outside in the eight car. Tim Beatty Jr. out of a good run at Jennerstown will start inside row nine. And A.J. Frank, second place in points, leading in the rookie standing, starts alongside in the 45. Winner the first time the Broke Up Series raced here at Mansfield, Eric Corbett in the 75 on the inside of row 10. And Danny Sammons on the outside of that row. 
Toby Porter from the south in car number 13, and Lottie Rush Jr. in car 71. Keep an eye on that car. They've been improving each and every week out. Pro number 12, Glenn Gall, the second place run here one year ago here in this race, and Woody Howard, kind of a surprise. This guy's been towards the front a little more often this year in the 55. D.J. Kennington, also a career-best run at Jennerstown. Inside row 13, and Randy Humphrey on the outside in the 93. Row 14, Vince Vanello, all the way from Georgia. Former track champion here at Mansfield on the outside, Joe Cata, with his hot rod forward. Row 15, we'll see Sam Pallone in the 48, and Wesley Law in the 68 machine on the outside. Law, a rookie contender here in 2005. Jeff Oakley will take the 13 car from the inside of row 16, and Todd Peck in the 40 car lines up alongside. Row number 17, Jimmy Spencer takes the provisional. He'll start the 36 car on the inside, and Jason Mignon, rookie contender in the 07, on the outside of that row. Final row, Robbie Marhefka and the 12 car to the inside, and Jeremy Miller, another rookie here in 2005, along the outside of that row. Starting to see a hole develop, several cars dropping to the back. Steven, what's up? Five drivers have lost their starting positions. They'll start at the back of the field. They include Todd Peck, Sam Pallone, A.J. Frank, Clay Rogers, and Jody Lavender. Now, most of those guys were late for the driver's meeting. However, Jody Lavender had a steering problem in qualifications. Fritz Augustine, who directs USAR and works with the driver, said, OK, we're going to let you fix it. We're going to have to go to the back of the pack. Yeah, Lavender's guys had to replace the pump that actually provides the pressure going to the steering box. In other words, that's your power steering. When that baby goes out, it's going to be a long night. There's a lot of turning going on at this little short track. They can't live without power steering. Surprise with a couple of cars in qualifying. On board with Michael Rich, he'll be carrying our Jack Roo sauces on board camera tonight. He lines up and gets set to go. Johnny Rumley, always an exciting shot from the eight car. Rumley seems to always have that act to be right in the middle of the action with that Lucas Oil Chevrolet. Our third on board will be on board the Tim Bainey Jr. machine, the Greased Lightning number 15. And Bainey coming in off of a good run at Jennerstown last uh, race two weeks ago. And Bainey was very good in practice today and really... He didn't get a great qualifying ever, but I think a lot of that had to do with the change of the racetrack. We'll talk about that more as the night goes on. Had a report there may have been uh, some problems with that car, possibly an oil line during practice as well. To date, no one has won the Tucson win for the pole award. Can Shelby Howard do it in that number 20 Tony Stewart smoke barbecue sauce Pontiac? Well, I think Joe Kaufman's sitting in right a better position right here because the outside groove has been better, especially on these starts and restarts. I think you're going to find the outside's going to be a better place to be. So maybe Joe Kaufman gets the edge in the start of the race here. Hard to argue with that theory, indeed. Field rolling down to the green flag, and in the flag stand from Lincoln Electric, Bobby Del Coco waving the green flag, and we're underway here at Mansfield. Auto Parts pole. It is Shelby Howard asserting himself out front, but right now the battle is Shane Huffman trying to find a way around Joel Kaufman. And Kaufman's car is really squirrely. He's kind of squirming around on him, but I think that's just low air pressure. They've got to wait for these tires to come up to him. You can see a lot of bumping and banging going on in the deeper in the field. These guys are really trying to feel their car out. It's Vanello right off the bat. Right off the bat, the elite auto collision Chevrolet in trouble, along with Leslie Law on the Porta Cool Ford. Law's car comes to a rest to the outside of turn three. 68 car really showing a little bit of damage there. Apparently, the 14 backing into the side of that race car. We'll be back with more action from right here at Mansfield Motorsports Speedway and tonight, Mansfield 250, right after these messages. This telecast of the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series is brought to you by Hooters Restaurant the official neighborhood restaurant of USAR. Lucas Oil. Lucas Oil is the worldwide leader in heavy-duty and high-performance lubricants. Miller Lite, the official beer of USAR. Miller Lite. Good call. And by Naturally Fresh. Pour it on with Naturally Fresh salad dressing, sauces, and...
synthetic oil stabilizer. Light enough for imports and tough enough for semis. Come on in. Have a seat and I'll be right back. I've never actually done this on the second date before, but I really like you. I, I thought maybe we could do something different and exciting. You know, fresh. Here goes. Surprise. Surprise? A naturally fresh, light ranch dressing. Naturally. Get fresh with someone tonight. Naturally fresh. People think that the Australian airbag is full of young, wild ranch hens called jackaroos. Fact is, jackaroos are quite civilized. Until they grab hold of the big bowl taste of their favorite jackaroo barbie sauce. Ah, then things can get a bit out of hand. Every jackaroo knows. If you don't have jackaroo barbie sauce, you ain't got jack. Two down, one to go. Finish this guy off. Get on. Oh. Beer. That. Beer. This is beer. Beer is falling from the sky. It's raining beer. It's beer. 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 <laughs> Come outside, everybody. It's raining. Maybe your light beer should taste more like beer. Great tasting, less filling Miller Light. Miller, good call. Back at Mansfield Motorsports Speedway on board with Michael Rich. Number 28, Jack Roussas' Ford. He's lined up behind Mike Laughlin Jr. for the restart. Laughlin was going to take this race off. Couldn't stand being away. He's here and running in contention right now in the early going. Well, I think the other part of that is all these Southern drivers are here as well because this is going to be a championship race. If they're going to go, go ahead and take a race off, this would not be the one. Come here, get some experience. They're a little beaten bang and going already here. Joel Coffin tried to take a bid to the inside on Shelby Howard. Couldn't make it work, and that opens the door up for Shane Huffman. Huffman has got that second spot. Can he hold on to it? And now Coffin slipping back into the clutches of the point leader, Vinny Gordon. Gordon on the outside, and Scott, that outside line, that middle groove through the corner seems to be the faster way. Yeah, your car goes in, you let it go ahead and slide up a little bit, then you get a great run off the corner. The guy pinned down on the bottom, very difficult to get that bite to finish the pass. This track seems to have some progressive banking in it, that inside line, although it's strong for the entrance and center of the corner, getting off the corner seems to be the equalizing factor. Yeah, a little bit, uh, it takes away the banking, so that really hard to get those rear tires to bite and get up off the corner. You like being that higher groove, and Vinny, you can really get a good run off the corner from that point. Joel Goffin settles into the fourth position, now taking that wide line. Mark McFarlane in that wind fuel Chevrolet, the 32 car, and some smoke keeper in the field. Looks like Toby Porter's 13 car might be having a little bit of difficulty to tighten industrial Ford. Right along with Johnny Rumley in the Lucas Oil car, and you can see these guys are going to move up. He's trying to move to the bottom to make a good runoff. Really hard to do. Riding along with Rumley, and let's listen in to Tim Bainey. You're good, Timmy. Keep running like that, buddy. Raise your rhythm. As you can see, 10 10 points coming into this event. Bainey. Riding behind Rumley as they try to work through traffic. Here's a battle for second. Well, that, the key thing there, the spotter was telling Bainey, find your rhythm, find your rhythm. This is very much a rhythm racetrack. You want to hit every mark. Here's a guy that can try to make a run at the bottom. I don't know if he can finish it. Huffman from the outside powers back up and holds off the challenge of Benny Gordon. This is what Shelby Howard wants to see. He can sit out there and tool along all by himself. Let these two guys behind him race. Well, at the same point, these guys are kind of wearing their tires out. They're really abusing their tires at the, doing this, trying to race side by side to get the position. But if you're going to make a jump, you've got to do it early because as these things start wearing out, get a little bit of tire wear, it's harder and harder to pass. Joel Kaufman still rides that fourth position. Perhaps he's in the best spot right now to go to school as to where each of these drivers finds a quicker line and may be able to get himself back to the front. The 44 car riding in fourth, and right now that 32 car McFarland is not really turning up the wick. He was the quickest car in practice. He was quicker than the track record by two tenths, but when it came down to advanced auto parts pole qualifying, he was slower than the track record by two tenths. Well, Four tenths of a second difference. Yeah, that's what happens when a racetrack changes changes just a little bit you miss it but they were set up for a good long run i think that's where you'll see it a marker farm benny gordon showed you how to get around 
bike, just a little bit of bump and maybe a little nudge. If I, that's what you're going to do, you've got to finish the pass and go, on, go ahead and go on by. Mansfield Motorsports Speedway, one of the venues in those five championship races that will decide the Hooters Pro Cup Series championship. And that's why we see a lot of these Southern drivers here this weekend trying to get some track time, build their notebook up a little bit for the return in October and championship action. Leader Shelby Howard already starting to work some traffic, closes in on the 18 of Jeremy Miller, the Get Industries Chevrolet, dives to the inside. Let's that leader get by. Coughlin starting to turn up the wick a bit in the 44 car. He's closed in on Huffman. Yeah, I think Shane Huffman was moving around the racetrack, trying to find a, a different line around the racetrack. Shelby Howard's got a miracle of Benny Gordon right now. That lap traffic slowed his down his momentum. He couldn't get going again, and that allowed Benny Gordon to close the gap. Shelby Howard had to work his way around the 40 of Todd Peck, the GLR Investment Chevrolet. And here's a pretty spirited battle right now. Jeff Agnew and Mike Laughlin Jr., the 7 and the 73, going at it right now. Laughlin, that Titan Industrial Ford, told me earlier, he said, I set out Jennerstown, and I was supposed to not come race here at Mansfield. We had other work in the shop I had to do. He said, instead, I decided I got to get back to the racetrack. Well, Jeff Agnew started 12. He's really the car that, so far that's been able to advance positions, and he's been doing it on that bottom group. How long can he keep doing that, though, Gene, without burning his tires up? Agnew in that Ford took over the reins of a Ford automobile back at Indianapolis Raceway Park and promptly put it into victory lane. Right now, working on lap traffic as they work deeper in the field. The 12 car of Robbie Marhefka, the Clark Chevrolet, they'll get by him, and Agnew from the inside is able to work around Laughlin by using Marhefka as a pick. Battle for the lead back to turn one. Well, Benny Gordon did this with Shane Huffman. He worked and worked and worked and, get, and then made a great run on the bottom. But the thing is, he had to stay there for about three laps before he finally cleared him. I don't know if he can afford to do that. He'll have to make it quick or his tires are going to be cooked. This particular car that Benny Gordon's on board, we documented in the first, uh, actually the second, third, and fourth race of the season, it was their own in-house chassis. They've gone back using the Hess chassis here this week with the Predator Performance engine underneath the hood. Right now, it's getting the job done. They're closing in on Mignon, Jason Mignon in the seven car. Jugular energy drink. Pontiac stays to the inside. Top two off the corner, and Shane Huffman has been able to reel in the leaders along with Joel Kaufman. Shelby Howard maybe just backing up just a little bit. Maybe his car, the tires are starting to grease up a little bit. When you're set up for a short run, that might be the situation where you sit on the pole, but then you start getting a little bit loose. Benny Gordon got a great run off the corner this time. Gordon down into the corner in turn three, slides alongside, oh. body slam, and Shelby Howard up the racetrack. Benny Gordon will take over the advantage, leaves the door open for Shane Huffman. Huffman also creases the fender on the side of the 20 car. Well, eight tires hold better than four is all I can say. You go in there, you, you know that you cannot stay down there for a long time. So go in, he makes a great run in there, makes a little bit of contact, upsets Shelby's car a little bit, finishes the pass. Caution, under caution, second caution of the day. Spin by Toby Porter, the Titan Industrial Ford. A little bit of damage on the front of that car. However, he did not mess up those GG stripes on those Ford Tauruses. So Porter was running 13th at the time. Kind of a disappointing qualifying effort for Toby Porter. Porter back underway, but not before the second caution of the night has been shown here at Mansfield. Well, Toby Porter and his crew have already had a, a long day. The tight industrial car was involved with Marhevka in practice today, so they were just lucky to be back out on the racetrack to get in this event. Don't forget to sign up for the Team Hooters Challenge. You could win $500. And this week's lucky winner, Bob Marsh from Mansfield, Ohio. He selects Mark McFarland as his choice to be in victory lane in tonight's Mansfield 250. Racing action will continue here at Mansfield in just a moment. Coming back to green after the second caution of the night, leader Vinny Gordon on the break. He'll jump by about a car like he's got Huffman on the rear bumper. Of Huffman is the 20 car of Shelby Howard. Howard trying to look to the inside. Nothing doing there after he was bypassed from the lead. And lots of heavy traffic deeper in the field. Clear, clear. Good job, good job. I'll follow these guys. They're all lap cars in the bottom here. 
that the spotter letting him know that he, he's got to stay on the outside groove because if you go down to the inside, even though the, it might have a nice opening, that slower traffic's going to keep you held down there. You can't afford to be caught down that bottom lane right now, Gene. Let that outside line bypass you, and it will be a long night here in Mansfield. Back on board with Michael Rich, continuing to follow the seven car of Michael Offlin Jr. Here's a guy that'd like to get back to victory lane. It's been since May of 99 when Mike Laughlin won what has been his first and only Pro Cup Series victory. Had it, well, one year ago in the IRP. It looked like he had it in the bag and a lap car had trouble came up and collected him. He's looking to do it all over again right now, watching that traffic from that eighth position. Back up front, Gordon still feeling the pressure from Shane Huffman, the two point leaders in each division of the North and Southern divisions here in action and battling for the lead tonight. And Shane Huffman kind of has the advantage here. He can choose which line he wants to and just kind of work the racetrack. He's got a couple of cars between him and Shelby Howard. He can work the racetrack, try to find something around Benny Gordon. Benny Gordon can't afford to make a mistake right here. And a short week for that team, a quick turnaround after winning the race at USA International Speedway that had been rolled over to a Sunday afternoon event. They had to get their work done and get here to Mansfield in just three, four short days. And you go back to the top of the show, you talk about the rain. The rain affected that show down in Lakeland. It was supposed to be a Saturday night event, went into a Sunday because of the rain. A very hot Sunday afternoon really affected those drivers from down there. Certainly did. A lot of dehydration after that event. Meanwhile, up front, Vinnie Gordon still feeling the pressure from Huffman. But Gordon knows his way around this racetrack. He won both events here in 2004. And he's picking up right where he left off because his car looks very solid. He's using the racetrack to his advantage. He goes in at the bottom, kind of lets the car drift up, makes a kind of a diamond, if you will, and comes off the corner under wide open throttle. Try to take care of those tires further back to the back. The veteran, Gary St. Amant, putting the pressure on the rookie, Joey Logano. Logano started sixth, has dropped back to ninth, and looks like he's just riding right now, Scott. Well... He's got a big lesson to be learned right here because Gary St. Amount also knows his way around this racetrack. And maybe the thing to do is let Gary go and then follow him, but right now he's just kind of holding his own. Gary St. Amount looking to turn this season around. They've not been extremely happy with the results of the Jax.com Chevrolet, the 11 car, looking to step up, although they're fifth in points coming into this event. They'd like to put that car in the winner's circle once again. Right behind St. Amont, Marty Lindley in that 16 car, that Hooters Air Ford. That car has been stout on several occasions throughout the day. During practice earlier today, I was really watching that 16 car, and that car really rolled to the center of the corner. Well, he's got Jimmy King as his crew chief helping on that, and Jimmy really understands racing, and you know that you don't have to have a great car. You want to make a good qualifying effort, but to win races, you got to have a good race package, and I think that's what these guys worked on all day long, what you're talking about. $1,000 on the line at each race for the Advanced Auto Parts Pole Award, but $10,000 plus is the size of that check if you're in victory lane at the end of one of these events. So, yeah, the bigger numbers seem to attract uh, the strategy a little more intently by those crew chiefs. Plus, add to it, cars qualifying in a race-ready condition as they have for many, many years right here in the Pro Cup Series. I was just watching that battle between Logano and St. Amon. St. Amon could get his nose under, but the youngster would jump off the corner and keep that lead. Strong race car for Joey Logano. Had a decent run and really showed well in practice, not only here at Mansfield, but over at Jennerstown Speedway uh, two weeks ago. Still Logano inside that top 10, trying to hold off these two veterans right behind him. Look further back and uh, saw a glimpse of Johnny Rumley, the eight car. There's another team, that Boyd Salt race team with the Lucas Oil sponsorship on the side of their Chevrolet, really looking for a change. Clay Rogers from the back of the pack. Several cars had to go to the back of the pack, including Jody Lavender. Now, Lavender wants to do what Shane Huffman did one week ago. Had an oil, or excuse me, a power steering pump problem and went out, got it fixed, and won the race. He did that at USA International Speedway. Lavender would like to do the same thing tonight. Well, it's going to be a little bit tougher order here, I think, the way you have to pass. How about Michael Rich putting a move on Mike Laughlin Jr., the big man still on the outside. He is very catch him up there. Oh, problem with Shelby Howard. His car's backing up. Must be a tire going down. It looked like the car wanted to turn. That could indeed be a right front tire down on Howard's car. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa everybody in on the bottom. That is Toby Porter down on the inside. Saw just a glimpse of him to the inside of turn two. So the second time Toby Porter has gone out or spun around tonight to bring out the caution flag. Caution number three. And 
a huge break for this car. He can get in with that flat tire because Toby Porter brought out that caution. Great break for Shelby Howard. Howard on pit road right behind him was A.J. Frank, the 45 car, the second place in points uh, holder right now, headed to his pit as well. And Howard bringing that car around long pit road here, Scott. Well, you actually enter in turn two, so you have to come through three and four and all the way around. And remember, he's a very front pit stall because he was our pole sitter. Thank goodness for him. There's no other damage. Just looks like it's a tire gone down. Could have happened with some of that rubbing, although most of that was to the left side. In fact, Stephen Cox is waiting for Shelby Howard down in his pit. Well, the problem on this car is self-evident. The right front on Shelby Howard's number 20 pole sitting machine. So they're going to bring it in, replace the right side tires as quickly as possible and send him back out. But, you know, look at the scuff marks on the left. They can't do just two tires, and the team knows it. They immediately jump over to the left side. They see the same thing we do. Big scuff marks on the BF Goodrich G-Force TA radials, both sides of the race car. So this will cost Shelby track position. It will not cost him a lap yet. Well, they did a great job keeping him on the lead lap, but that was his four tires. That's the only four he's going to get tonight. Wow, I don't know if I'd want to use them this early. It's early, but we'll see what happens. We'll be back to Mansfield. Benny Gordon getting set for a restart as the field circulates behind the Auto Group pace car here in the Pro Cup Series. He's set for a restart. Gordon on that outside line, we see that McFarlane and Agnew have made their way into the top five after the stops by the 20 car of Shelby Howard. And also coming to pit road was A.J. Frank. They've got a long way to work their way through the field. Yeah, and coming in second in points here, that's big for that team. You know what, after missing a driver's bidding, going all the way to the rear, this is the second time he's going to the back. They just need to try to make their way to the front. A hey, top 10 finish right now would be great for that team. That team is struggling here this weekend. A.J. Frank and Clay Rogers both in competition this weekend the team fields a car in each division one with uh, aj in the north one with clay in the south We've got both cars running tonight and both cars just can't quite hit the mark and one more little thing clay rogers was at that truck race in texas last night only three hours of sleep that might play a little bit in, as the night goes on here as well change in position agdu takes fourth away from mark mcfarland McFarland in that 32 car, they were very strong in practice, looking to put it all together and post a good finish. Finish has been the problem with that 32 car lately. It has. It's a very strong race car, very good in practice, qualifies great, but they just want to try to put that last little nail. The fastest car in the racetrack, I think, going watching this thing, has got to be the 73 car, Jeff Agnew, the only guy that can drop to the bottom, make a pass, and get back up and keep on digging. Agnew can drop that car to the bottom. We see him do it at many, many racetracks. He likes to drop the car off on the apron, the flat part of the racetrack and get the car to turn. Agnew might have something here. We'll see if he continues to do so or if he's got to move back up into that middle group. Back to this battle just uh, just inside the top 10. Lugano still holding off St. Amant and Lindley with a whole host of cars behind them. Here's a look at that battle right now from Johnny Rumley's perspective. There's a lot of talent all the way around this racetrack. I'm telling you, there's 20 guys out here that can win this race. They all look like they're running about the same speed. They're just out of position. And Scott, that's something else. We look at this Pro Cup Series point standings here. Four races into 2005, and you look at the top 10, and there's plenty of cars in there you expect to see in victory lane. What really is noticeable here for the new season of 2005 is that when you look outside the top 10, there are some names there you also expect to see in victory lane. There's a lot of strong race cars here in the North. There's some really good cars here tonight. With well, this field is the best we've seen at least this year. But it's been, I can't remember a field this good in the Hooters Pro Cup action. A precursor to October and Championship Series action for the Pro Cup Series. St. Amant right now has got his hands full. Looks like Lindley's car is starting to roll and get a pretty good run on the Jex.com Chevy. Look at the Soul Canadian in the Pro Cup Series ranks here this year. The SM Freight 17 of DJ Kennington had a pretty good year. The guys work so hard. I mean, we've learned so much. These cars are totally different than anything I've ever been used to. And uh, I think basically we're just getting used to the cars, getting used to the guys around here. And hopefully we can just keep creeping our way to the front and try to have top 10 finishes every week. And I think that's about where we are right now, the top 10 car. And maybe we can try if we, we learn a little more yet. Maybe we can get to the top five. Well, I hang around North Carolina a good bit these days, and I just, I just love to listen to D.J. Kennington talk because it tickles me to hear that northern voice. D.J. Kennington splitting his time with the Northern Division of the Pro Cup Series as well as the Cascar Series back in Canada. 
They only missed one of these Northern Division races, as he told me a couple of weeks ago. But still a third place run at Chinderstown and eighth in points coming into this event. We ride along with Michael Rich, really saw it on that wheel. Well, and you can see how flat the racetrack is down here at the bottom, and that's where you have to go to pass. You got to drop all the way bottom. Oh, you felt him get a little bit loose. He can't move up because that green car of Michael Alpha Jr. is still on the outside. Did he get loose or did they bounce off each other, Scott? I think that's just a little bit of loose. You saw him grab it, and here he go. He made the pass. So Rich able to get by Laughlin this time. Made it work going into the corner, not necessarily coming off the turn. Well, what he did is he just got down that bottom drove and he kept working and working. And finally, he made that. He just let the car slide up. He sees a little bit quicker. Now that he's in that desired line, the car goes in well, turns, and gets a great run off the corner. Starting to see a few raindrops on the lens of our rooftop cameras here at Mansfield. Just exactly what we don't need to see. And perhaps that's what's going on with Huffman as he puts the pressure on. Vinny Gordon once again. They've got lap traffic directly ahead and Joel Kaufman in tow. Kaufman has recovered nicely. Looks like he's just saving that race car. Well, Benny Gordon going around Jimmy Spencer there at the bottom. Now Marhefke at the top. He's going to pick his way through traffic. That allows these guys to catch up. Kaufman's car looks like it's picked up a little bit of steam. Bobby Marhefke Stays on the high side to jam up the leaders just a little bit. Oh. Looks like Kaufman gave him a little bit of an extra incentive to get out of the way. Doesn't have much time to recover because Agnew putting the pressure on Kaufman. That's a battle for third about to develop. Yeah, Jeff Agnew's all over the 44 car of Kaufman, and we know how fast his car is. And he just said, guys, give me a chance. Give me a lane. I'm going to take it. Watching as Huffman able to just pull the inside and take a peek in the middle of the corner, but just not enough forward bite to make the run at Benny Gordon. Yeah, you're exactly right, Gene. You can roll in, make it, make the car roll through the middle, but you really got to, oh, oh we got a caution. Yeah, we've got another caution, a couple of cars in trouble. It's like Joe Gata pulling away with the 42 along with Jeremy Miller, also involved the 45 of A.J. Frank, Frank's car going for a spin out of turn four to bring out this caution. The American Iron Horse Ford back underway. No contact with the concrete, so it would appear for A.J. Frank. Let's take another look at it as it unfolded through turns three and four, right in the middle of the corner. That's a little bit of contact between A.J. Frank and Shelby Howard. Remember, these guys are trying to work their way back to the front. They were all the way down in the bottom trying to get through lap traffic. What a tough way. That's a heck of a spin, and nobody clobbers him. Carl almost came back up atop the outside wall as he tried to recover. A.J. Frank held on to it. Heading out to break, we'll ride along with Tim Bainey Jr. Under caution here at Mansfield. Pit Road action here at Mansfield. Most of the leaders peel off and come to Pit Road. St. Amant's already in his pit. Shane Huffman along with Martin McFarland bringing their cars in. Right side, BF Goodrich G-Force radials for Huffman. Meanwhile, a little further up, the 44 of Joel Kaufman has come in for service. Right side's on that car. Steven is there. Joel Kaufman comes down pit row, and this should be a standard stop. The car was just a touch loose on them earlier. They're trying to drive the car just a little higher on the racetrack to accommodate that. This will be a four-tire stop with fuel in the well. They kill the engine. Joel Kaufman gets it started again. He's having a hard time getting around the 97 car of Sammons, but he is off pit row. First car off pit road was Mark McFarland. Well, we've seen that before, man. That crew gets it done on pit road. Things certainly picked up on pit road, but Vinnie Gordon stayed on the racetrack. Todd Shelby came in. Joel came in. You guys decided to stay out. And I, I watched your decision-making process, and I wasn't sure if you were happy. There we go again, right? The Predator Performance Board. Um, we're running strong. We feel like that there's going to be a lot of lap cars late. Uh, it, we got... It's just a tough decision at that time, and the safest thing to do is to pit. But, hey, we're rolling the dice to win the race. Comes in as the point leader in and out of pit road. The Shelby Howard gained 14 spots. Joe Gata, eight spots. Those that lost spots on pit road. Johnny Rumley, nine positions on pit road. Yeah, Coffin lost six. But remember those guys... Shelby Howard only took fuel because he got in the tires earlier. A couple of the guys only got two tires. Benny Gordon stayed on the racetrack. Michael Rich stayed on the racetrack. I'm telling you, this kind of field right here is going to be tough to pass no matter how fast you are. And A.J. Frank was on pit road just a little bit ago. Do you know what Academy Award nominated film that was shot right here in Mansfield? I'll tell the answer as soon as you get back. 
1994, the movie Shawshank Redemption was filmed right here in Mansfield, just a mile away from the Speedway. All right, you are Ohio State Reformatory, the site of Shawshank Redemption. And that's looking for a get-out-of-jail free card. It's Benny Gordon. He likes to stay on the racetrack. He is your race leader. Several other cars behind him did not come to pit road. Fifth place on back, Shelby Howard in the 20 car came to pit road. Fuel only and got back on the racetrack. On the break, it's Benny Gordon as he has all day long out in front. But Michael Rich, that Jack Russoss is Ford now, giving chase down in turn three. And it surprised me. I know Michael Rich had a really good race car, but Mike Lawson was just a little bit off. I thought he would get that opportunity to make corrections with his race car and take advantage of that. But Benny Gordon, you can't argue with performance, but yet track position is going to be so critical at this race car. 20 plus race car still on the lead lap at this juncture. 100 laps now complete here at Mansfield. Track position, an important commodity. Perhaps these guys hoping for an opportunity to have not so many cars on the lead lap when they finally do come to pit road. Get fresh tires at a Lotus Sunoco race fuel. Todd Gordon alluded to the fact there may be a lot of cars not on the lead lap late in the race, but that doesn't really take away the fact you're going to have to work hard to get around it because these aren't just lap cars that roll over and die. They might only be a tenth off. Very difficult to pass as well, along with these guys on the lead lap. We had a pretty good battle developing right now with A.J. Frank rookie contender and leading rookie contender here so far in this northern division he has got on that rear bumper shelby howard in the 20 car then behind them a pretty good battle looks like huffman getting a little squirrely up off the corner as he tries to find a way around mark mcfarland that's going to be a tough order to try to get by that wind fuel chevrolet here comes agnew you talked about him earlier being the fastest car on the racetrack and scott it's hard to hard to doubt that comment well i think what he's got to do he's got to be patient right now there's a long ways to go jeff agnew loves to just stay on the button and work that race car as hard as he can be he can, he's got to be patient he's just too early to go we got 145 laps left to go you've got to be take care of your stuff well he's going to take care of business right now going to the inside of huffman can he complete the pass Agnes got a lot of confidence. This Doug Weddle-led team down on pit road, able to get the stop executed in a fine manner. And they've put a good race car underneath Jeff Agnew. Add to it this year, bringing Elvin Rector into the mix, helping them with a little bit of strategy and some spotting work as well. Well, coming up, the Hooters International Swimsuit Pageant. You can see it live June 28th at 7 p.m. only at your local Hooters restaurant right now. Pretty exciting action on the racetrack. Yeah, with a little bit of raindrops. You can see it in the camera there. There's a little bit of rain, and you, you, some of these guys are slipping around more than others. Jeff Agnew's got it, though. He's going to get after it, and he's going to stay after it and try to get back to the front. Scott, is that more of a function of seeing the drops on the windshield and knowing you've got to get going and get to the front in case this race were to stop short, or is it really affecting the characteristic of the racetrack? I think it's changing the racetrack, along with the fact that I think the crews know in the back of their mind that, hey, halfway is lap 125. Get as far to the front as you can with raindrop fall. 16 laps away from halfway in that $1,000 Lucas Oil bonus. Pretty spirited battle between Agnew and Huffman. Two former champions of this Pro Cup Series going at it with Kaufman all over their rear bumper in that 44 car. Yeah, you know, I think Joel Kaufman's in a pretty good position because he can kind of fill the hole of either the low line or the high line and just take away position from one of these cars. The concern for weather has certainly ratcheted up the competition just a bit. Stephen, how are things down there? I want you guys to keep an eye on the sky because down here on Pit Road, fellas, it's raining. Not much, just sprinkles right now, but there is precipitation. Let's see how long this thing lasts and how long the weather will hold for us. Well, while the haulers are outside of the pit area, so all they have down there is just their pit boxes, but if you had a computer with radar on it, you'd be the most looked at guy right now. Indeed you would. Agnew almost had the last car of Jeremy Miller hold up his assault of Shane Huffman. This battle just inside the top 10 for 8th to ninth position. Agnew continues to work to the inside. He's a master at the inside line. Lays a little fender on the side of the 81 car. The Knights Company Ford of Huffman still unable to complete that pass. Yeah, he needs to get back up and cool his tires back off. He was really working the car down on that bottom groove, abusing his tires just a little bit. But you notice what he does do, when, when Jeff Agnew gets up alongside you, he puts his right front fender right next to you, doesn't allow you a lot of room. He's going to make that pass. Look who's coming into the picture, Clay Rogers, trying to climb his way into the top ten. Leader continues to be Benny Gordon with Michael Rich giving chase. The crew watching Gordon and his progress. We'll be back to Mansfield. Michael Rich 
trying to run down Benny Gordon as we close in on the halfway point. Gordon, Rich, Laughlin, along with A.J. Frank, stayed on the racetrack. They were your first four car. Oh, and oh, more trouble. Sam, Sam Pallone and Trump, and they're still spinning out of turn four. Joe Gata involved. Like Tim Bainey Jr. got a piece of it. The nose of the other car going by, Randy Humphrey. Looks like some heavy damage to the right front of the Great Clips Ford. And unfortunately, I was looking down. I was looking straight down into turn four when Sam Pallone came up off the corner. And, and evidently, the right front went down and went straight into the wall. And that was a hard hit. Sam Pallone was running very, very good, just trying to get back on that lead left. Has had some good races of late, but just have not been able to transfer them into good finishes. Hero Vegetable Chevrolet comes to a stop over in turn two. Let's take another look at it as Sam Pallone climbs out of the race car, takes some of that safety equipment off as he gets out of the race car. Youngster is still looking for a good run here in 2005. Let's take another look at, ooh, oh, that hurt. Yeah, I, got, I saw him come up off turn four. The car was running real good. It went straight to the wall, and then everything breaks loose. Joe Gay gets turned around. 93 car, Randy Humphrey gets hit. Eric Eric Corbett the Corbett back that here. Yeah, man, tough, tough break for these guys. You see the damage on the front of Eric Corbett. Larry and Son heating an air forward. We peeled the right front headlight door open on that race car and knocked some of the body work loose on the nose of that car. So that team will have a lot of work. And that's a team that really has got a strong race car. Their luck just has not been with them. And, and here's another thing. You can have a great race car. You came in, you did your pit stop, you made your changes. Now we're ready to go back racing. You get caught up in something that wasn't your your fault. And it really was nobody's fault. Sam Pallone came up off the corner, knocked the tire down, and that just started a melee of problems for everybody. You can see there's a bungee cord out on the racetrack. These guys are going to go around. They're all in the bottom groove. They're getting ready to come down pit road. They need to make their changes and get ready for the last part of this race. I think if Mike Laughlin, Michael Rich, they make the right changes, they'll be able to run with Benny Gordon. Let's look at how we got here and a hard crash at turn four. Yeah, and everybody, the next two guys get by, and Joe Gata can see him, but I don't think Eric Corbett could actually see. He's paying attention to the 42 car in front of him. Joe Gata kind of lifted a little bit. Poor old Eric Corbett just kind of drove it, and then everybody else, the smoke was everywhere. They didn't know where to go. Spotter's trying to help them through, but, man, there's debris everywhere on the front. Straight away, you got to be careful of that. They're trying to get Eric Corbett's car back together, a little bit of tape, some bungee cords. Come on, let's go get it. The field is under caution. The pits have not been officially open. Corbett came down pit road, so he'll get a tail end of the longest line penalty before this next restart, but that's the least of his worries right now. Yeah, Sam Pallone sitting right there at the entrance of pit road, and that's right there as you as you enter or come off turn two, that's where you have to drop down to come into the pits. So it's kind of waiting. We got to get that guy cleared out of the way so we can come down pit road and everybody can get their stops and get ready for the last part of this race. Well, not only making the entrance, but also making the exit out of turn one to come back onto the racetrack, a long pit road. Well, you got to wonder, is Benny Gordon going to stay out on the racetrack? He's the only guy not to come down to pit road. These guys, Michael Rich, Mike Laughlin, A.J. Frank, they've all committed to come to pit road. You wonder how long Benny Gordon going to stay out here? Is he going to try to run another 50, 60 laps? What, you know, I wonder what's going on down there. The leaders coming to pit road, or at least most of the leaders, Michael Rich, Mike Laughlin, we see A.J. Frank coming in, Johnny Rumley also coming in on the racetrack. Benny Gordon is going to stay out and presumably come across start finish to lead at halfway, but Stephen Cox is waiting for pit stop. He is tied for fifth on the all-time USAR Pro Cup win list, and he's taken a huge gamble right here. Michael Rich with 10 wins to his career credit in Pro Cup comes in to take on tires. They do not like the way this car is handling going into the corner. They say that they've got to lose in the car up on entry so watch for adjustments there as they have problems on the right side of the race car very slow there on the right side now they move to the left side tires and i'll tell you scott this is a big gamble the rain is really starting to come down now we've got uh, quite a bit of sprinkling down here on pit road we're on lap 125 right now but he chose to give up that second place spot to come in so he's gambling it's not going to rain anymore well he had to take this gamble he had to get to pit road and get those four tires benny gordon just took halfway so Gordon headed to his pit stall, but not before picking up the $1,000 Lucas Oil Halfway Leader Award. He has led 98 laps, helped the five lead changes we've seen so far. 
Benny Gordon has waited until lap 126 to make this stop as well. And again, we have sprinkling down here on pit row. They take on the right side tires. Now they're working on the left side tires. They're going to take on fuel as well to be able to go the distance. They like the car except in the center of the corners. They're going to move the track car just one notch down and get him back out. Well, that was a great stop on pit road. The problem is they didn't have to race anybody. They were by themselves. Good job, you guys. Let's see if you can make your way back to the front. More action coming from Mansfield. Shelby Howard stays on the racetrack, inherits the lead, and brings the field back to green with Mark McFarland in that second position, and Howard gets one whale of a restart. Yeah, and Shelby Howard got a great start, but I'm not so sure McFarland's car really got going up on the corner. He's lacking a little bit of horsepower. To wow, look at that move. Everything that Huffman could do to keep from getting into the back of that 32 car, Huffman gets by, and McFarland starting to drift back through the field. Problems for McFarland. Now Huffman wiggles going to the corner and Agnes wow! can get by. Did you see that move? He cut that car in the middle and went through between him and Marhefka. What a move by Jeff Agnew. Agnew on his horse right now. The NGA Hooters Pro Golf Tour Ford marching its way back towards the front. Don't discount though. We've got Joel Kaufman, that 44 car, rebounding after two weeks of engine problems. They are back in the hunt in that Pontiac and looking pretty strong right now. And right behind them is the 44 car of Clayton Rogers just behind them is you can't cut out Marty Lindley. He's right there. He's in the hunt. He's going to stay in the hunt. But I am still overwhelmed by the 73 car. How good that car cut in the middle of the corner. McFarland still struggling with that 32 car. And still way up to the high side. Kennington's going to get by. Looks like St. Amand is going to mount a charge as well to get by the 32 car. Something is wrong. Could it be a tire going down on McFarland's race car? Well, no, no. It goes through the corner fairly decent. He can maintain through the corner. Just when they get to the straightaway, it just doesn't have that zip down the, the way it did earlier in the race. Heavy traffic. McFarland now has worked his car to the inside. Woody oh, Howe, ooh, little oh. contact for Michael Rich with Joe Gata. Three wide trying to work their way by Mark McFarland. Let's, uh, let's see this again. You can see Michael Rich had Joe Gata on the bottom. Michael Rich real lucky to keep that thing out of the wall. Could have been a disaster for Michael Rich now trying to work his way by the 75 of Corbett. You see McFarland still sliding back through the field. Woody Howard, there's a car that I expected a little more from. They've struggled here today, as have had a, a couple other drivers as well. Well, you talk about a struggle or what's going to be a struggle. It's Benny Gordon at 66 making his way back to the front. There's 21 cars on the lead lap. They were hoping for a lot less. It's going to be a long night to get back to victory lane. You know, they waited. They've got fresher tires, but they're going to have to use those tires up to get by a lot of those other race cars. This is a very difficult racetrack to pass at. We've watched it all night long. But the only guy that really has done a lot is Jeff Agnew has passed a lot of race cars. I don't know. Benny Gordon's got a great horse. I don't know if he can get there. See what happens. Michael Rich trying to work his way by Woody Howard. Howard in the toe and right now following Joe Gata down into the corner. Here's McFarland down on pit road. Seventh place start for the Southern Division Invader. He's racing strictly for the money and the experience. No points for Southern Division drivers here this weekend. They're going to look at that race car. Meanwhile, Woody Howard still has got his hands full. And here comes Benny Gordon. The 66 car dives low on the 28 of Michael Rich. I think Michael Rich can kind of hold him at bay because of the fact that Woody Howard is right in front of him. Really difficult to keep your car down there for more than three or four laps. You've got to let it drift up back up to the top side to cool your tires back off. Michael Rich still has got his hands full trying to get by Woody Howard. This battle deeper in the field outside your top ten. And Gata was one of those cars involved with the most recent caution. Apparently the damage not too intensive. Not hurting the forward progress of this race car. Woody Howard also showing some of the battle scars on the right front of that race car. Michael Rich trying to use that outside groove, trying to get around Woody Howard and just, just trying to find every bit of track. Whoa, whoa, hang on. Ooh. Ooh, Michael Rich, the outside wall in turn one. Slapped it pretty good with the left front. Yeah, it sure did. He just barely got his right sides up into what you would be the marbles. And the race car came around and slapped that left front. That's the danger of these southern guys coming up here. You heard a really good race car try to get experience. Well, Michael Rich will have a two weeks to get the car ready for Myrtle Beach. We'll take another look at it off into the corner. Just got his right sides up just a little bit too high, Gene. And I think the car came around. Michael Rich pulling away. We've got an onboard look at it as they try to change the tires on pit road. Take a look at it on board. 
Yeah, the right rear loses traction and around it comes. That's, that's the big thing. You get right up there. You're trying to use that outside groove. Use all of it. And he just got his right sides up into the marble. Dwight Bar adjustment on Gary Sadovat's 11 car. Also, the hood is up on Joe Gata's number 42. Coming up, the Hooters International Swimsuit Pageant. And you can watch it live at your local Hooters, June 28, 7 p.m. Be there. Enjoy Scott and I as we enjoy all the action. We'll be back to Mansfield right after these messages. Michael Rich brings out the most recent caution. And been the pinball on this machine most of the evening. Bouncing off the levers and the bumpers. This time, the concrete. Apparently putting it into Michael Rich's run tonight. Had gotten as far as second before his night coming to an end. Well, Shelby Howard takes the lead, and he gets another great restart with Jeff Agnew in tow. Shelby Howard, we know he got four tires early. He got enough gas in it for a little while, but can he make it to the end, Gene? See what those right side tires do later in the event. Jeff Agnew has been strong from the get-go. And that NGA Hooters Pro Golf Tour, Ford really putting the pressure on the Tony Stewart-owned 20 car. Garlic separation as they work down the back straightaway. Shane Huffman still in the mix, not too far back, just kind of lurking in the shadows with Joel Kaufman and the 44 of Clay Rogers. Yeah, you got a 44N and you got a 44S, but Joel Kaufman's kind of been a player in this thing all night long. They just can't shake him. He's had a stout race car, showed that at the opening race at South Boston, went to victory lane at Lonesome Pine, motor problems at IRP and at Jennerstown. Looks like they've got it licked here tonight. That car running strong and just waiting for their opportunity as we close in on lap 149. A little more than 100 laps to go here at Mansfield. Your Tucson scoring going by, and I saw a ninth place with DJ Kennington followed by 10th. Len Galt. Go get him, Glenn. Len Galt with a career best here at Mansfield one year ago. And what a what a variation. You've got Joey Logano out there, what, 15 years of age. And Glenn Galt, well, he's a youngster too. What, 55? Oh, wait, 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 Got a tough order, though. He's got some stout race cars ahead of him, including the battle you see right now for the lead, Shelby Howard and Jeff Agnew. Well, when they did driver introductions tonight, there were two guys that got a big cheer, Gary St. Amant and Glenn Golf, kind of hometown favorites. But the guy with the best race car still, I think, is at 73, Jeff Agnew. He can make that car go wherever he wants to on the racetrack. He can start out high, cut it low, and do vice versa. That car is very, very good if he can clear the 20 car of Howard, I think he's going to set sail. He's got plenty of time to get the job done. And that being said, he immediately drives down low and puts a challenge on Howard. Howard slams the door shut. Pretty much a factor of the layout of this Mansfield Motorsports Speedway. That middle group has been where you want to be all night long. Well, Jeff Agnew is one of them guys. I've been friends with him for a long time. He's very slow outside the race car, but put him in the race car. Patience is not in his vocabulary at that point. Yeah, not at all. And I don't think I want to be on a golf course with him either. He's a pretty good golfer from what I hear. But the crew got one on him this week. They went golfing, and he did. Oh, man. <laughs> he won't <laughs> like that. How about this? Marty Lindley gets around Clayton Rogers along with Joey Logano. Right behind him is Martin Nesbitt, a name we haven't mentioned yet tonight. Nesbitt with a strong run here, trying to turn things around for the 88 team. Got a one win in the Pro Cup Series. That coming at South Boston would like to score a second trip to victory circle. Lindley gets by on the high side and Coffin drops the position. Oh, Drop, oh, oh, drops oh. more than that. He's off the pace somewhat. Yeah, there's something right wrong with Coffin's car. Could that be a right rear going yeah, down? It's possible he's got a right side tire because he has really slowed up. Jeff Agnew making his bid for the lead again. Jeff Agnew drives downstairs, knows he doesn't have much time. If he can't make it work, he's liable not to have room on the high side if Shane Huffman can close the door. Yeah, you got a battle for the lead. You're exactly right. He's got to finish this move this time because he will not be able to be clear. The 81 is going to fill that hole. You've got to finish once you get to that point. Pancake the side of the fenders down into turn three. Agnew with a little bit of an advantage up off the corner, but Shelby Howard from the outside lane 
keeps those ponies wound up a little tighter in that Pontiac. This time, though, Agnew is going to complete the pass, and the rookie passing the defending champion out of turn four. Well, Joey Logano with a great race car, but I think Shelby Howard, give him a call. That's a young man with a, that's getting a lot of experience, showing very well here tonight. Logano in his second Pro Cup race, and last night, Rogers in only his second truck race. Coming home with an eighth-place finish, Logano getting the job done, getting by the defending champion, and now Martin Nesbitt is able to just about complete that pass and does so. So the track record holder here at Mansfield for the Pro Cup Series, Martin Nesbitt advances the 88 car into the sixth position. Meanwhile, Jeff Agnew has worked his way around Shelby Howard and will be right. Jeff Agnew out front of the Mansfield 250, former leader here earlier tonight. Vinny Gordon trying to work his way back to the front under caution. Caution out, 169 up on the scoreboard. Jeff Agnew slowing the field down as Jason Mignon. It's the 07 car straightened around and back underway. The jugular energy drink Chevy slowing progress here at Mansfield as we go to caution once again. Looking forward to our next five races on the Pro Cup schedule. Southern Division action at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Northern Division action at Killcare. The South back in action at Hickory Motor Speedway. Add to it Motor Mile and Southern National Speedways. Jeff Agnew has 137 consecutive starts and is our Tucson Star of the Week. I've been a race car driver for about 19 years. In 1998, we won the championship and rookie of the year in our first year. We did not win a race that year. We, we actually finished in the top five you know, just about every race. That bothered us a lot. Now we're winning a few races. Uh, it's still really hard to, as far as the competitiveness of this series. It's gotten so big. I didn't really start playing golf until I started running the Pro Cup Series. And golf and racing are really competitive and really enjoy the game. I'm probably not as aggressive as far as using bumpers and, and things as I should be. Uh, you know, we're going to go out every race and try to win every race. But I drive 120% every lap of every race I'm ever in. Well, I hope when we quit racing that people will remember me by a good, friendly, nice guy that's pretty clean and, and raced as hard as he possibly could race. And knowing Jeff Agnew the way I do, the way he drives a race car, he's not one that's going to lay up on the golf course either. Not at all. Ten wins to his credit so far in his Hooters Pro Cup Series career for Jeff Agnew. Took him 54 starts to get to victory lane. By contrast, Mark McFarland has been knocking on the door, but he is pulled behind the wall. Problems for the 32. Steven is with him. Mark, what happened to the race car? Uh, I think the alternator went out. It's, uh, second time this year it's happened, and the battery goes dead, and the motor starts hitting. So uh, we, got, we got a lot of homework to do. We'll get back to shop and figure it out and come back next time. It's got quite a problem. Saturday night short track racing, you run right off the battery, but in a 250-lap event, you've got to have an alternator. Yeah, I'll let you know. Marty Lindley with a strong move. Oh, we're going to get back to racing. Mar Marty Lindley, I just cleared Shelby Howard. Looks like Logano now up alongside Marty Lindley. Lindley almost took a trip to the fence there as he and Howard were racing, and that left the door open for Logano to give it a try. Yeah, I was watching Lindley's car, and the way it got so loose, I thought maybe his right rear tire had gone down from contact or something. But get back to the battery story. What happened? We have so many blowers, so many different things inside the car. You got you got blowers inside the car to keep the driver. You got brake blowers. You got rear end blowers. Everything trying to cool everything. You use up so much battery power. Batteries can't make it. You've got to have an alternator to keep that thing charged. And we just can't find stuff to finish these 250 lap races. Joey Logano right now running in the top five. Backed off from that challenge. He found it on the 16 of Marty Lindley. Got Martin Nesbitt on his rear bumper, trying to work his way into the top five. Meanwhile, up front, Agnew and Huffman right now just putting laps up on the scoreboard. Yeah, it doesn't look like Huffman can do much with Agnew, but Marty Lindley had made a great move to get around Shelby Howard, and then the next lap, his car just got loose. So I don't know if he's fighting something on the right rear of that race car, but it, there, it looked great. It looked really fast in that corner. Marty Lindley mounts another charge, is closed in on Shelby Howard and that smoke barbecue sauce Pontiac. Deeper in the field, well, not that far back, seventh position. That's where Benny Gordon has made his way back to, so the point leader putting the pressure on Martin Nesbitt right now, and here comes Lindley again to the inside of Shelby Howard. 
Lindley, Lindley really has a good race car. Now this time, if he can just finish his pass off, keep his car straight, I think he can drive away from the 20 car. But man, he, he can't afford to get loose like he did earlier. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Contact wow. for both Howard. Whoa, quick snap spin, but keeps it off the concrete. That could have been disaster for Shelby Howard. We have to get that car back underway before the leader, Agnew, gets back around to put him a lap down. Let's take another look at it off into the corner, side by side. Yeah, Marty Lindley got a little bit loose. You saw the back end of his car. That made contact. He was he was lucky to go straight. Logano dove down underneath him, and the 20 car, Shelby Howard, goes around. Nobody hits him. Quickie yellow. Quickie yellow, and right back to racing. Logano now third after quickly snapping the wheel to the inside and driving by that spin. Leader is Agnew. Huffman giving chase as they work down the back straightaway. 65 circuits remaining here at Mansfield Motorsports Speedway. Logano feeling the pressure from Marty Lindley as they work off of four. Logano holding on. And for a 15-year-old to have a veteran like Marty Lindley all over your rear bumper, that's really got to have you rattled. Well, what he needs to do is not look back. He needs to look forward and don't worry about it. But give a call to Betty Gordon. He did what I didn't think was going to even be possible. He's made his way all the way up to this lead group of cars, and it's been a tall order to pass some very good race cars. Gordon right now just outside the top. Whoa! Oh, Nesbitt oh. goes around. Got to wonder, did they get together? A little nudge to the outside concrete for Nesbitt and the 88. We go to caution 12th time here tonight. A little well, damage know, to the right front. Yeah, I know he was working real hard trying to get by Martin Nesbitt. We're going to get an opportunity to see another look, and, I, you know, it might be just a little bit of contact there. Nesbitt limping away in the Ford and off into the corner. It's already underway by the time we see it. Spins around and a little nudge to the right front. That can knock the toe in out of the race car. Yeah, well, you can bend ball joints. You can bend A-frames. they got to be careful there. As we head out, a look at your Miller Lite rookie rundown. Mansfield 250 presented by Hooters Air. Gene Gray, Scott Sutherland, and Stephen Koch bringing you all the action here at Mansfield Motorsports Park with Jeff Agnew. Out front of the 73 car. Let's take a look at your Lucas Oil recap of tonight's race. Lap number one on the break. Shelby Howard from the Advanced Auto Parts pole slides up the racetrack, takes the advantage away from Joel Coffin. Lap 29, Benny Gordon, the point leader moves to the inside and bypasses Shelby Howard for the lead, bringing Shane Huffman with it. A cut tire puts Sam Fallon to the outside concrete on lap 118. Behind him, more action as around goes Joe Gata and Eric Corbett. 140, lap number 140 into the corner. Little bumper and banging action, and Michael Rich goes to the spin cycle, winds up along the outside concrete. Lap 159. Jeff Agnew drives to the inside and will bypass Shelby Howard to take over the point. And on lap number 187, battle for fifth position, sees Martin Nesbitt go in the spin cycle. He will make contact with the right front of that 88 car. That is your Lucas Oil recap to this point of the Mansfield 250 presented by Hooters there. Well, the pace car makes that dive onto pit road. Now, remember, these cars are in turn two. Benny Gordon being motioned to the back of the field for his involvement. Suspected there might have been contact with he and Nesbitt. Yeah, race control feels as though there was a little bit extra contact to make Martin Nesbitt make that spin to bring out this caution. Therefore, that's a rough driving penalty sent to the tail at the longest line. Benny Gordon now, again, a long way to work his way to the front as Jeff Agnew. Gets back underway, brings the field with him. Lap car, Johnny Rumley, don't say that very often. Rumley having some difficulty here tonight. Yeah, driving the Lucas Oil car, and his car fast. He just wants to get back on that lead lap. Jeff Agnew squirted away from him. Now he'll have to wait, maybe get another chance if there's another caution come up. Field working off of turn two. Looks like Agnew got a pretty good jump. Put about four, make it five car lengths over Shane Huffman. But this kid right here, Joey Logano, turned... 15 years of age, had to wait till he was 15 to be able to even enter a Pro Cup Series race. Quickest one he could get to was Jennerstown. He ran that race two weeks ago. His second race is tonight. He's hardly even 15 years and a month old, and he's getting the job done, holding down third, and he's kept his nose clean. That's been the secret tonight. 
yourself, uh, I think, just staying out of position, out of position, put yourself in trouble. The rest of these guys are beating and banging. He's been pretty much clean the whole night. How about Joe Coffin trying to dig in and get that car back up to speed like it was earlier? You were talking about beating and banging. That's short track racing, folks. And that's what this Hooters Pro Cup Series is all about. And Coffin really trying to put the pressure on Lindley and Mike Laughlin Jr. sitting back and watching what's going on there. And remember that Laughlin made that later pit stop, and he's working his way back to the front very nicely. Look who's behind Laughlin. I know, the old girl, he's coming, Glenn Gold, trying to put it to these young guys. Glenn Gold has made his way all the way back to seventh in the American title and trust company Chevrolet, the Orange Blossom Special. It's on a roll. He's juicing it up and on his way to the front, too. This is going to be an exciting night. Well, what Mike Laughlin Jr. has done remarkably, considering he made that later pit stop, got those four tires, and he's made his way very well back up through the field. Laughlin, going to point that car down just a little bit, and that battle has settled down. Coffin has backed off of Marty Lindley a little bit, probably letting his tires cool and getting another run later in the event. Looks like the 20 car of Shelby Howard trying to deal with Tim Beatty Jr., the Grease Lightning Ford. They'll go by the 18 of Jeremy Miller. Shelby Howard trying to work his way back to the field. Remember, he and Marty Lindley got together over in turn two. Howard went around. He's got 49 laps to try to make it up. He's got a long way to go, but he's already hustling and trying to dig through the field. Gets by Tim Bainey Jr. Joe Gata also in tow. Gata has been on pit road a couple of times. DJ Kennington and Glenn Galt going at it now. Galt, now, oh! I saw some sparks there along the front straightaway right at the flag stand. I wonder if they made contact or if Galt made contact from the outside wall. Let's take another look. Oh, yeah. Look oh. at the spark fly. That's using every inch of the racetrack to your advantage, and he got it. Glenn Galt, despite a little brush with the outside concrete, holds on to the spot. Kennington not giving up. Drives down low once again with Johnny Rumley a lap down watching this battle as they go back to turn three. Pennington with a very good race car drive in on the bottom. He's going to be able to complete the pass, I think. Yes. He does so. A little damage to the right rear quarter panel on the 17. That Pontiac of DJ Kennington certainly getting used for all it's worth here tonight. See, Benny Gordon has made his way back to 13th already. He's watching these laps click off and knows that he's got to get to the front as quickly as possible. Does he have enough time? A lot of good race cars still in the mix right now, and Gordon's got his work cut out for it. And I, and I think you're very, very good point. A lot of good race cars. He used his car up pretty darn good the first time to get back to the front. I don't know if she's got enough under the hood to get her back to the front the second time. Well, not only under the hood, but how much did he punish those tires, particularly the right side tires? Watch it live at Hooters, June 28th at 7 p.m. Like Scott and I will. That's the Hooters International Swimsuit Contest. You can only see it live at your local Hooters. How about Gary St. Amant trying to make his way? A lot of these guys have had to visit pit road too many times. Gary St. Amant, one of those, making some adjustments, trying to... Wait, make his way back up through Mansfield, one of those racetracks. Very difficult to pass on. They tested here. It looked like the hood was up, and they were adjusting the sway bar on that Jex.com Chevrolet. Say the lot. Still looking for another trip to Victory Lane. He won one year ago at Lake Erie Speedway, where we'll be in one week with this Northern Division. And I expect he'll be very fast when we get back over there. But he's got a good race car here tonight. It's just all about track position, fighting him again. St. Amant trying to work on second place in points. A.J. Frank oh. in trouble. Whoa, Joel Kaufman has shortened the back of that RMI Fabrication Pontiac substantially. Kaufman contact the outside concrete. And Robbie Marhefka and the 12 car sitting down to the inside of turn two. Well, that was pretty good contact for, for Joel Kaufman. I, I, you know, I don't know. A little bit of contact down in the corner. His car came around. Backed it up in the fence. That's more than just a bumper cover. Definitely going to be a clip put on the back of the 44 for Joel Kaufman. A look at your Tucson leaderboard as we head to break. Bunch of veterans with a rookie smack dab of the... Well, Joe Gata behind the wall, climbing out of the 42. Steven is there. You know, Joe, before all that smoke and fire and flame and all that other stuff, you were on the lead lap. Look like you had a halfway decent race car. Yeah, we kept on adjusting on it all day. We come in the pits about six times. We hated to do it, but we finally got it, you know, where it was drivable. And, uh, you know, we're going to hold our position, just try to get the most points we could. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for U.S. Insurance, Speedco Truck Lube and Pointer Drywall, 
Uh, you know, the motor expired, I guess is the best way of saying it. So I'd like to thank Eddie Pardue for working on her shocks. Say hi to my wife, Robin. She couldn't be here today, but we'll be home tomorrow and, uh, you know, get ready for the next race. Joe, talk about the weather. It's it, We've had some sprinkles. It's been extremely humid. You look tired. Well, it is pretty humid out there. Uh, our car is pretty hot. We don't have any vents in it. But um, it's, I've seen worse, but it's very hot out there. I mean, I know a bunch of these guys are probably really sweating out. Can't wait for these last 30 laps to get over with so they can get in here and get them cold drink. Well, Gator, to watch the rest of this one, 16 cars on the lead lap, a Legato sandwich in the top five, Benny Gordon in the penalty box, and Jason Mignon is with Steven. Jason, you almost made it to the end. What happened to your car? I uh, had a little bit of problems with brakes. Uh, kind of had a lot of front brake in the car tonight. Maybe she had some less out or some little better ducking on there. Had to uh, keep the paddle up, and we were hanging on there, even though it wasn't right. But, uh, you know, got them down in the corner. It seemed like just didn't have enough brake. And just spun around on us. Well, he had also an issue here, as it was at Lakeland one week ago. And Joel Kaufman out of his race car, as is Danny Sammons. But Kaufman... Trying to recover. Looks like he's overheated a bit. Yeah, I think just the time to just sit back, relax, reflect on the day. He had a very good race car all day long. Just got caught up in one of those deals. It really wasn't his fault. But hey, we got to go home and fix it. Get ready for like next week, like you said. Danny Sam is bringing his friend Joel Koff with a cold bottle of water. And those two drivers, elements of that one-two finish at Salem last year, where the series will be in late July. From the pit box, Teams and family members watching the action as we get set to go back to green. Jeff Agnew out front at less than 30 laps remaining. Well, if you got anything left in your race car, and if you can get up on top of that steering wheel, now's the time to do it. The youngster in the middle of that deal, a lot of experience around him. You're the spotter. What do you tell a young man like that? Follow the guy in front of you <laughs> and just hang on because you only got a little bit left. You know what the thing is? The young man's probably not been in these long type races. 30 laps is a whole race to them. So just hang in there. You're doing a great job. Try to finish this thing in the top five is remarkable. Veterans with Logano in the middle. Agnew and Huffman, former champions of this series, on the restart. Agnew up through the gearbox. Not able to pull at least more than a car length or two on Huffman down to turn one. Looked like Johnny Rumley hustled in there a little bit. The right rear wanted to swap ends. Well, Johnny Rumley wants to get on that back on that tail end of that lead lap and very, very badly. Mike Laughlin Jr. sizing up Marty Lindley. That is fourth and fifth position. And just behind them, Kennington. That 17 car trying to put two top fives together in as many races in the Pro Cup Series. Laughlin trying to highlight, trying to find a way to rim ride around Mansfield and get by him. Marty Lindley. But you got to be careful. Don't get up there too high like like we saw earlier when Michael Rich got up there. The right side got in the marbles and the car came around. Glenn Golf. Go get him, Glenn. You're hanging in there. Golf has got A.J. Frank all over that rear bumper. Second place in points. Frank trying to hold on as he was the point leader going into Jennerstown. Pretty good run after they've recovered from a run from all the way out back with a 45 car. The battle has settled down for the moment. And the leader is whoa, in whoa, trouble. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Agnew going around in turn four. Saw the tail end of that. Well, yeah, I would suspect what might have happened yeah, there, Scott. Yeah, there's a little bit of contact. You know, they're both fighting for the same part of the racetrack. But what's remarkable is that Jeff Agnew went around driver's side door, exposed to the rest of the field, and they all got around him. Neither did he get into the concrete, so Agnew able to continue on. But track position, not to his liking. Now, let's take another look at it. Agnew, your leader going around bringing out this caution into the corner bump and i think shane huffman what he was trying to do there is trying to get the car to turn make a good move down he went on around it logano found found his way around with him as well joey logano might be in the driver's seat indeed he is logano is going to take over the lead huffman being motioned to the tail end of the longest line for his involvement logano kept the car off the back of the 81 in that crash and now has the lead you don't have to be the fastest race car to sometimes be in position to win races, and I think that's just what's happened here. We'll be back to sort it all out here at Mansfield. Drama at Mansfield in Pro Cup Series Racing. Logano, his second ever race, has driven around two incidents to put himself in the lead in the closing stages here at Mansfield. Let's take a look at the most recent incident. Down into turn three, Huffman into the back of leader. 
Jeff Agnew. Agnew around Logano nearly collected Huffman. Both drive around, but Huffman to the back of the pack for rough driving. Agnew with a flat tire. Stephen Cox, what's happening down there? Left and right side tires, but I'll tell you, take a look over toward pit wall. You'll see the flat tire that caused this pit stop for the guy who was leading this race. Well, I saw him carry it around the car, and it was definitely flat, whether it was just before the spin or right during the spin when he had the tires locked up. What a tough break for Jeff Agnew. Probably the best race car on the racetrack. What a break for this young man, and what nerves and butterflies he must have. Rumley, the veteran, to the inside. Lindley, the veteran, right behind him. Restart. Joey Logano. With and, and he's got a tough one on the inside because Johnny Rumley's not going to give up easy. This might be his shot to get back on the lead lap. Rumley trying to get on the lead lap. Logano. Stays to the high side. Rumley roughs him up just a little bit. Lindley thought about going down there. Loft went all over Lindley. Wild shootout here in the closing stages at Mansfield. Rumley on the inside losing ground. And it is Logano stretching out. Three, four, five car lengths in turn three. Well, you got to give it to Johnny Rumley. He thought he could shake the kid up and make a move and get him back on the lead lap. After about three attempts of it, he thought better of it and let him go. Second place battle heats up again. Laughlin almost dive bomb to the inside of the corner on Lindley. Now Laughlin's got his bumper full of DJ Kennington. Kennington in fourth, trying to step up to third. And what about that next car behind him, the 32 car of Glenn Gall with a whale of a run tonight? Galls has watched Logano advance his way to the lead and realizes that some of these cars get in trouble ahead of him. He may have the same opportunity. Off the corner, Kennington trying to work on Laughlin. Mike Laughlin Jr. trying to cover the inside groove while Marty Lindley now able to scamper away in second position. Mike Laughlin made a heck of a move. We knew he, he pitted a little bit later than everybody else and drove his way all the way back, and now he's running third with D.J. Kennington all over the top of him, but there's only a handful of laps left. Can he hold on? Front two cars scampering away. Right now the battle is for third with both the 7 and the 17. Laughlin and Kennington going at it. Gold fifth, and just outside the top five, you've got sixth place A.J. Frank. Yeah, it's a good battle for him, considering how many times he's had to start in the rear, A.J. Frank. In that points battle, you want to get every position you can, especially when it gets down to the end of the race. Kennington puts a fender, just a slight touch to the seven of Laughlin. Laughlin maintains the position. Kennington still trying to cut down to the inside off the corner. Mike Laughlin Jr., wide entrance, riding the high line, or what would be the high line on most racetracks, center of the racetrack here at Mansfield. But a higher line and holding off Kennington. Kennington tries it again off the corner, but meanwhile, Logano riding off into the sunset. Battle again, trying to heat up Kennington. They only have 10 laps to try to get it done. Working on the back of Laughlin. Meanwhile, Lindley, he had closed up a little different distance on Logano, but the difference is not going to be enough unless he can find a little more speed in that 16 car. That race right now is stabilized. This is where the race is right now for third. Kennington came home with third at Jennerstown two weeks ago. Trying to do it again here tonight. Drive to the inside of Laughlin. Tries to keep it down low. Yeah, I think the trick here, though, is you've got to move the guy on the outside up. You go down in the bottom, you've got to get right up next to him and actually touch them doors. That's how we've seen it all night long. Kennington's going to have to make a little contact and move Mike Laughlin up to get that job done. Good, clean racing for third. Meanwhile, Logano sees Lindley looming large in that rearview mirror. Again, Kennington to the inside of Laughlin. You may have heard you, Scott. Tried sliding up a little bit, almost got into the back of the seven car. Race back down into turn number three. Kennington still a lower line. Lindley pedaling for all he's worth, trying to catch Logano. Time is running out, only six laps to go. Here is the 20 car. He's gotten by A.J. Frank. And your pole sitter, Shelby Howard, on the charge, trying to run his way back to the front. Well, the two of the front two have breaking away, but what a what a clash we've got going on here between Mike Loff and D.J. Kennington just really getting after it. Looks like Logano has really pulled away now from Marty Lindley. Starting to get physical for third position. Kennington 
looming right in that left rear quarter panel of Laughlin's number seven. Meanwhile, Glenn Galt's got his hands full with the 20 car. Off in the corner. Whoa, 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 whoa. Kennington slid in there, almost got into the seven car. Wow, well, that's going to cost him two spots. Two spots. Howard checked up for a moment. That lets Galt scamper away a little bit, put a little room between them. Three to go for Joey Logano. Can he get it done here tonight? Youngest winner in Pro Cup Series competition, Brian Vickers, at age 16. He's got four wins in his Pro Cup Series career. Logano could beat that tonight if he can hang on. Only two laps to go for Joey Logano out of Alpharetta, Georgia. Oh, with AJ Frank going around in the 45 car and caution is shown. AJ Frank brings out the 16th caution of the night. Some damage to the right front of that race car. And this will cause a green, white, and checker finish. This is going to turn out to be a wild one. Well, I think it is, because it's going to stack everybody up. The thing is, there won't be the lap cars on the left-hand side or inside. So it's all single-file racing. It's going to be a good one. We'll be back for the finish right after this. An unbelievable chain of events here in the Mansfield 250, presented by Hooters there. And in only his second outing. 15-year-old Joey Logano finds himself at the head of the field. Here's how it happened. Huffman into the leader, Agnew. Huffman to the tail of the pack. Agnew to pit road. Logano set up and brings the field back to green with 20 to go. Then... Watch where you're going. Keep going. Keep going. You're all right. You're all right. Keep digging. Keep digging. He's there. You're all right. Dang, I bumped Will with that 55, tell 45, and it means to do that. With checkers inside, Logano sees a green-white checker restart and down on pit road. Keith, is this the last thing you needed? How is the car after you come back off a of yellow? Now, earlier in the race, you said you did not like it except under long greens. Well, right now, the tires are getting wore out, so the car's a little bit looser. But we didn't want to see this. He's doing so good. You know, uh, we had a good cushion. So I got confidence in him. He can do it. Ain't but two laps. 15-year-old young man in his second ever Pro Cup race, Scott. At 15 years old, I was planning my second Pro Cup race to be just like this. Joey, I'm going to go win the race, but you know what? I ended up behind pit road with a blown-up motor. <laughs> On the start, Logano jumps out front. Here comes Laughlin. Laughlin and Lindley get ooh, together. Ooh. Logano now with the advantage by four, maybe, no, not even that. Two and a half car lengths. They're still battling for a second. Here comes Gold for the inside. Well, Marty Lindley got in there a little bit hot. Mike Wilden got underneath him. They made contact. Glenn Galt's underneath Marty Lindley. He's got a run on him. The veterans let the rookie Logano scamper away and through the final corners. And trouble at turn three. Logano off the corner. He will win his first ever Hooters Pro Cup race in only a second outing. Big problems in turn three as they came to checkers. Shelby Howard in trouble, and several cars still trying to sort it out. Over in three and four, Howard back underway. The nose of his Pontiac used up, but a very happy crew on pit road, and Joey Logano on his way to victory lane. You and I talked, Gene. This young man is 15 years and 18 days of age, and in only a second start, has won his first Pro Cup race. Puts his autograph on the front straightaway. We're coming back to hear from our winner. This telecast of the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series is brought to you by Hooters Restaurant. Hooters makes you happy. Miller Lite, the official beer of USAR. Miller Lite, good call. Lucas Oil. Lucas Oil is the worldwide leader in heavy-duty and high-performance lubricants. And by Jackaroo Sauce. Jackaroo, served in some of the world's finest backyards. A final lap incident does not detour the outcome. Shelby Howard getting together with DJ Kennington, then a late hit with Woody Howard. But it was Joey Logano headed to victory lane, picks up his first ever win. Here he is out of the race car, and Stephen Cox on his way over. And what a finish. It wasn't just a great race. What a finish. I want you to walk right over here. This guy, just a few weeks ago, turned 15 years old in your second start ever. What are the emotions right now? Oh, man, that was, that was the coolest thing I ever did. That was awesome. I mean, I mean, we, just, I mean we, we didn't have a really good car in the beginning. Come in, made a really good pit stop. Came out past about two cars. Just kept picking them off. And, man, it was awesome, man. I like to thank my crew chief, Keith, and uh, 
all the, the whole team, you know what I mean? This is awesome. I got to know what was going through your mind. I talked to your crew chief, Keith, and he said that you really didn't like the way the car was acting as soon as you came back off of a yellow flag. Then you get a yellow with one lap to go. Yeah, we made a wedge adjustment when the pit stop, and, uh, you know, it got a little better, but it's still really tight in the middle. And I was faster when I held it down their bottom. So I held it down there, man. It, it, it worked good. It was awesome. Did you see the 16 car try to get under you in turn one? Yeah, I saw him. You know, I had to keep it low, you know. I mean, he was really good the first five laps of his run. And after that, I could start sailing off. But, I mean, I mean that, that last three-lap caution went green white checkered thing. Man, I, I didn't want to see that, but I'm glad we held him off. Bobby Gill has 40 wins in this series. You better look over your shoulder, pal, because he just turned 15 and he's got one in the bag. Joey Logano, also the Miller Lite rookie of the race, started six, brings it home in first position for his first ever win. Take a look at our results here. Logano, Laughlin, Gulf third here tonight. Marty Linden with a good fight tonight. DJ Kennington back out here having a good season this year. Shane Huff, but only able to recover to 12th. Tim Beatty Jr. 13th. We look down through the order. Good run for Jimmy Spencer tonight in the 36th car. We're going to add the remainder of our running order. The Todd Peck, Martin McFarland, Eric Corbett, all these cars having some difficulties late in the event and some damage to repair there. Looking a little further down in the order, Jeff Oakley and Lonnie Rush. They'll be credited with 34th and 35th position. Coming home second tonight, Mike Laughlin Jr. You know, the real race for just a couple of laps wasn't for first place. It was for second, and this guy ended up winning it. Mike, you tell me about it. Well, I'll tell you, Marty's a good racer. Uh, this short track racing, man, is what it's all about. Um, rough Marty up a little bit. Uh, maybe would have run him just a little bit more clean. It wasn't anything really dirty, but um, caution before that, I had him trapped behind the lap car, and he just totally turned right on me. I could have turned him in and, and didn't back out of it. And... Uh, had a little contact going down back straight away, and uh, we touched in the center corner. Man, this short track racing is what it's all about. I, I, having fun. Uh, he may not feel the same way, but um, really we got kind of lucky tonight. We just stayed out of all the trouble and, and missed everything. I uh, didn't really want the crew, anybody to know here on the radio, but uh, we have brake troubles real bad. After qualifying, the right front caliper was leaking real bad on us and uh, didn't have a right front caliper the whole race. So uh, lucky we got any fluid left, if we even do. For brakes? We don't need no sticking brakes. But the Degrees Lightning Blast the Pack Award goes to Benny Gordon. Five lead changes he led for 98 circuits. Sharing the Hard Charger Award, DJ Kennington in the 17 machine, the Mr. Gasket Performance Group Hard Charger also. Hard Charger Award winner, Glenn Gull. After a 23rd start on the field, comes home third here tonight, and he is with Steven. You know, Glenn, this, this one was a long time coming. I mean, this year did not start out the way you wanted it to. You guys earned this. I'll tell you what, we really needed a good run. Uh, we needed a good, <laughs> feels good. We needed a good car. I mean, uh, the car was good. It got tight, got real tight, tight at the end. But uh, as long as I keep it on the bottom, I had a lot of power coming off and I could use it all. And uh, my team really needed a good finish like this. They've been working awful hard and uh, they gave me a good car. It was really tight, but uh, they kept talking to me, telling me to keep it down. I, my mirror broke off at about 50 laps ago, so maybe that helped me out. They told me, uh, we'll leave that mirror up from now on, so maybe it'll do me some good. He's ran a lot of years without a mirror. I say, he that's the ticket. Go get him. Smiling like a teenager with a third place finish. Look at the point standings. Benny Gordon stays on top. A.J. Frank hangs on narrowly to that second position. Next race date, the Groucho's Deli 250 at Myrtle Beach Speedway Saturday night. June the 25th at 7.30. That's Southern Division action. And you can follow your favorite Pro Cup drivers on usarprocup.com online and ready to bring you all of our action. Our thanks to Racing Electronics, provider of our racing communications, and the best golf cart, provider of our ad track transportation. And to iCard, the official timing and scoring information system of the USAR. Onboard Images bringing you the in-card cameras throughout tonight's event. And congratulations to our first-time winner, 15-year-old Joey Logano. For my partner, Scott Sutherland, Stephen Cox on Pit Road, I'm Gene Crane. Looking forward to seeing you next.